Alright, hello, and welcome to a countdown of the 10 hardest levels in Crash Bandicoot 4, in my opinion. First of all, Crash 4 is a fantastic game, with great visuals and platforming. But my word, there are some really tough levels in this game that will make you want to rip out your hair and never play a game again. However, just because the level is hard, it doesn't mean I don't like it. There are plenty of levels in this list that I do actually enjoy. I'll be judging these levels through the eyes of a completionist, which means hidden boxes and hidden gem difficulty will count towards the level difficulty. So be aware, there will be some spoilers for hidden gem and box locations. Also, for the most part, I will be grouping the alternate timeline levels with their main level counterparts. There might be some exceptions if the timeline level is much easier or harder than its main level counterpart. I'll also be including flashback tape levels, and remember, this is my list, so feel free to comment which levels you found hardest in the comments. With that being said, let's start the countdown. In at number 10 is Off Balance, the level which introduces the wall running mechanic, a mechanic you will use throughout the game with varying degrees of difficulty. This level is extremely long and has numerous difficult sections. Most notable for me is the hidden gem path which is filled with hazards, but also this section where you have to use Lanny Lolly to phase in platforms while other platforms are moving. I found this part really difficult when I first played this level. Also, this level has quite possibly the most annoying hidden box in the entire game. I must have played through this level at least 10 times before I found this box. Oh, and this box as well. This one is almost just as bad. Seriously, what is with this game in hiding boxes in every single level? Greetings, cats. I will be running today's experiment. For the last time, it's not a cat, it's a bandicoot! So here we go then, the first flashback tape level to make the list. I did want to make sure to limit how many of these I will add, otherwise the whole list could be taken up by them. Engine's Nitro Bouncers was particularly frustrating, due to the Nitro Bounce Box mechanic where you have to bounce on each nitro box a certain amount of times in order to release it and therefore add it to the box total at the end of the level. And just like all the flashback tape levels, you're required to do a lot of precision jumps, which for me, more often than not, ended up in disaster. In at number 8 is Great Escape. It's certainly no Great Escape. Do 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 Anyway, it's mostly here for one reason. This section, right at the end of the level. You have platforms flying towards the screen at the speed of sound as you're desperately trying to smash all the boxes and land on said platform. It was so frustrating, when I first played this level, I actually ran out of swear words and had to start making up my own, like flubble flumps and slumpy dumps. However, the first part of the level where you play as Cortex is relatively okay. It does have a few difficult sections, but those are mostly down to Cortex's wobbly controls. In at number 7 is Run It By You, set during the aftermath of the party from Offbeat. This level is a right party pooper. First of all, I have to say it, this hidden gem might be the worst one in the entire game. You firstly have to spin an exclamation mark box hidden completely out of sight behind a barrel, before backtracking and moving your camera to a specific part of the map off screen, this in itself is frustrating enough for me to put on this list. But there's also more. There's six hidden gem boxes right at the start of the level, which I could not find for the longest time. 
then there's this section which killed me over and over and over again. And then to top it off, there's also a jet board section with horrible controls. And if that's not bad enough, then there's the alternate timeline level, no dillo dallying. So you have to do it all over again. Hooray! In at number 6 is Crash Landed. This level has almost everything I'd find hard. Ice physics. Check. Annoying animal riding section with bad controls. Check. I don't care how cute he is, Schnurgle controls like my uncle after drinking 10 pints down the pub. Also, unnecessarily hard bonus stage? Check. Really annoying gem path with hidden boxes. Double check. And to top it off, there's even an upside down section. Triple, quadruple, quintuple check. But on a positive note, the level really is stunning. I just wish it didn't make me want to chop off my own balls and feed them to the cat. Why did the bandicoot cross the road? To get splattered by a truck. In at number 5 is Rush Hour. This level is long, and I mean long. Way longer than War and Peace, way longer than your first day back at work after being on holiday, and way longer than the wait for a new Spyro game. <laughs> Dingadile section can be tough, but mostly due to the lack of checkpoints. Where this level really starts to grind my gears is Torna's section. There is pinpoint grind rail sections where you have to be spot on with every jump and hook shot, but that is nothing compared to the final part of the level, where you have to jump onto moving traffic while avoiding oncoming traffic, and you have to be constantly moving. This is basically Ultimate Frogger. Whatever psycho fought this section up is a complete toad. In at 4 is Cortex Castle, the final level in the game, and they certainly didn't hold back for this one. This is the ultimate platforming challenge. Throughout the level you use all four of the quantum masks. There is platforms that require cat-like reactions, but the main reason this level is on the list is because of this nightmare section. This level took me over four hours to get the flashback tape, almost entirely due to this part. You have to switch between all the masks constantly while timing your jumps and transitions perfectly. I'm actually pretty good at this part now, but on my first attempt at the level I died over 70 times. There's also the alternate timeline level seeing double which keeps the hardest section in the level and also adds a horrible Cortex section. So I'd say both are just as bad as each other. In at three is Bears Repeating. I have one word. Polar. This level is relatively straightforward even the bridge section, which is very reminiscent of Road to Nowhere and the High Road from Crash 1, is not too bad, thanks to the double jump and enhanced shadow. Now, I am recording and uploading this before a potential patch for Polar's controls, so be aware this level may be easier on the upcoming Switch version of the game, as well as an updated PS4 version. But right now, he ruins this entire level, his controls are so counterintuitive as to what an animal riding section should be in a crash game. It wouldn't be so bad if there wasn't boxes everywhere. Getting down the section alive is okay, but trying to smash all the boxes will drive you insane. Experiment start. In at number two is another flashback tape level. This is the second to last one in the game, and it's just pure hell. I have to be honest, I had to look up a guide just to beat the level. That is how difficult it is. There are flame boxes everywhere that require perfect timing, seemingly impossible jumps. I honestly could not get past the first checkpoint when I was recording footage for this video. That is just how bad this one is. 
I will never complete all the flashback tape levels ever again. And this one is the main reason why. But before we get to the number one in the list, there's a few honourable mentions. So, in at number one, the hardest level in the game is Toxic Tunnels. This multicolour gem path is the hardest part of the game. I was here for hours just trying to get through the section. Every time you make some progress, the game throws something else at you. And because it's a multicolour gem path, there's no checkpoints. Not only that, but there are hidden boxes in the most awkward positions possible on the gem path. And because there are boxes on the gem path, you have to go through the whole thing without dying to get the perfect relic. And this section right at the end is ripped straight from hell, with platforms that spurt lava if you stand on them too long, moving platforms with electricity, and bats that just get in the way. If you have the perfect relic for this level, you are a crash god. But there we go. That was my list for the hardest levels in the game. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. But for now, take care and leave me alone.